Hi everyone and welcome to Tap Into Your Creativity. Today we have Sergio Gomez joining us from Chicago and <clears throat> I'm gonna can't wait to share everything he has to say today. It's gonna be amazing and and there he is. <laughs> welcome my friend. <laughs> Thank you Hi, so Sandra, much for for joining us today, you're the it's uh, third time around for you and tap into your creativity and I can't thank you enough, my friend. So welcome. I'm super happy to be here with you. It's always exciting to connect, to see the things that you're doing, also to see how tap into your creativity has grown so much, has given over thirty five thousand dollars, right, for the to feed those who are more vulnerable. And that is amazing, you know, something that started a while ago, how you continue uh, you know, pushing it forward, and that's what we're here to support. <laughs> and exactly. have, have all our friends who are here as well. Yes, um, thank you all for joining us, and um, thank you, Sergio. You and I have become friends. Um, you know, it's incredible that, like you said, it's almost going to be two years in, in April um, that Tap Into Your Creativity started, and um, it's because of people like you who inspire me to keep going, and, um, and you have shown me also and um, so many things. I've learned so much from your academy and from everything that you've done. So, um, so for people that are new and they don't really know you, tell us a little bit about yourself, Sergio. So I'm an artist based here in Chicago and um, I was originally from Mexico, came here to Chicago in 1988, been here for a while and uh, well, I guess now about around 30 years or so. And um, well, I have, I'm also a curator. I have my own gallery here. It's called Territory Contemporary Gallery, curator for the Jovi Art Center here in the city. And I do projects online and in person. And um, more recently, you know, in the last five, six years, also helping artists, also with their own art careers and other things, art business related, mindset, marketing, and so on. And with my wife, Dr. Anna, you know, we kind of work together and have created this community of artists. So very happy to uh, to connect. I think the, the thing that I like the most is to be around community and around uh, people who want to excel themselves, just like you, Sandra. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And um, when did you decide that your career was going to be parallel between being an artist and then becoming an art business consultant? And then now you have your own um, almost school, if you want to mm -hmm. say, yeah. uh, to help artists grow. When did you know that that was something that you could do? And, and tell us a little bit about that. Well, it was kind of gradually. If you know, it started first with the, you know, people coming to the gallery and asking questions or, you know, shows that I was curating. And then came the podcast and the podcast kind of also helped to uh, spread the word out of the things that we were doing. And then I remember um, some years ago, maybe about six, six, seven years ago, we uh, went to a group, uh, uh, an organization of artists invited us to go and do some workshops. And so I got up on the stage and there were, I don't know, a lot of artists, uh, you know, on the, uh, uh, in that session. And it was really well received, you know, what I was teaching about the art business, really, really putting your art business in focus in your art career. And then all of a sudden, uh, you know, I'm realized, wow, you know, this is something that uh, maybe we can help more artists if we can take this online. You know, we, there's only so many places you can go in person, but when you do something online like we're doing right now, you know, all of a sudden there are no boundaries, you know, there are no barriers of entry. So that's kind of when it all started and uh, started with just one thing at a time, you know, one little course, and then that became a bigger course, and then that became, et cetera, that's not what it is there at Next Level Academy. And like we say, you know, you hit the nail in the head because you started this before COVID, right? right. You were already online before COVID. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So we were already uh, all set up for what we do online. And e even in the gallery, you know, we started really selling online the year before COVID. We really put all our, all the eggs in the basket of uh, working, trying to sell out online. And uh, so by the time, you know, COVID came, we were ready to roll. So... That's incredible. I mean, that you're so lucky that you were able to have all that in place because now, uh, I mean, we're back into kind of lockup again a little bit, you know, right? It's, right? COVID is all around us. I feel like it's coming to get me at some point, God forbid, <laughs> but I just feel, you know, everyone around me has it. So um, to be online and to be able to connect um, with so many different artists because what you provide also is you have a community building of artists. So not only are you 
the ring leader, but you have all these people interconnect, share their thoughts, um, which is so important. So can you talk to us a little bit about your community of artists? Yeah, so the next level community where this is an online uh, pretty much coaching program where artists come together and uh, they can learn. So we have a uh, challenge every 10 weeks. We have a new challenge. So right now, actually last week, we just started the Art Business Grow Challenge, which is really great. So every Monday we release a new video uh, or artists can come in, you know, look at that. They get the challenge, then they go and have to take action. Uh, we're also part of, uh, we have a Facebook group where artists can share ideas, interact with each other. Every Tuesday, we have a Zoom session where you get to meet other artists from around the world. And every Thursday, we do live Q&A. So and that's kind of like the cycle of what we do. Uh, it's really important to not only uh, give the resources, but provide the support, right? And also provide opportunities for artists to connect with each other, to collaborate with each other, and to grow your community. When you are part of a community, you grow your network. And you just never know, you know, like this, right? Uh, how something can lead into something else and and or you see somebody doing something and gives you an idea for something you can do with your own audience or with your own community or where you're at, at in the world. So I believe it's kind of like both things, um, it, 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 you know, where uh, you go there to learn, but you also go there to give because you can also share your experience with others and others can learn from you. So it's, it's really, it's, it's a really nice community. We, we, you know, we like to call it a supportive community because that's really what it is. Uh, just the other day, you know, somebody posted, uh, in the group, like, you know, he was trying a new, um, a new uh, um, uh, a gloss medium for his painting and it ruined the painting. So like, I don't know what happened. So, you know, you can see a lot of artists kind of coming in and giving their two cents, like, try this, try that, you know, have, maybe this happened, maybe that happened. And that's something that only a community can give, not a single person has all the experience in the world, but it's the collective, you know, experiences that can already benefit a whole group. So, do you um, help people who are um, emerging or also people who are established? Like where, what's your specialty, I guess? Yes, so we, uh, our specialty is helping artists in the long run of, the, of their art career, right? We believe the art career is not a sprint, it's a marathon. And uh, you gotta run and sometimes in the marathon you get tired. <laughs> And you need somebody on the sidelines cheering you up, helping you up. Sometimes you need somebody to give you water, right? So that you can keep running. And sometimes you need a break. So we believe that. So we have artists who are at the beginning of the marathon, you know, who are emerging, who are like, I need tools. I need to create a website. I don't know how to do a proposal. We have artists who are at the mid-career who are like, you know what, Sergio, I've been an artist for a while. And, uh, but right now I feel like, you know, the technology is leaving me behind. You know, I don't know all these new tools of marketing, and so that's why they're here. And we have artists who already have extensive experience. They have been around the world. They have traveled with their work. And, you know, they want to st still be part of a community. And they want to also um, be up to date with what's happening, what's changing in the world. You know, one big example is NFTs. You know, that's something new that every artist wants to know about. So, so I was going to get to that. <laughs> yeah. We are, we are also helping and exploring that. And unpacking what that all means. So, so that, that's so in, in reality, we help at every artist at every level where they need the help. So let's talk about NFTs because I think there's a lot of people that um, still don't understand what an NFT is and what is the benefit to having that? Yeah, so well, first of all, don't miss Monday's breakfast. We said here it's gonna be all about unpacking the NFT and very easy, uh, <laughs> kind of easy uh, to understand words and examples that I'm putting together. But think of it of, of this way, right? The NFT is a way in which now you can make something that has ownership in the online universe, right? If I have, you know, this artwork actually that we're going to be uh, putting out today for the Feeding America, right? I, I have it right now. Whoever buys it today, I will have to physically ship it to you and that person will have it. And then that money is gonna go to Feeding America. So one person at a time, will have this, right? Yeah. When it comes in the digital world, well, when, you know, let's say you put an artwork in your website, uh, anybody can take a picture of that. So nobody really, I mean, it's yours, it's your image, but you know, who claims ownership of it in reality? So NFT allows you to really assign almost a certificate of ownership to say, I own, no matter who has a picture of it or a copy of it, I own that digital asset, whether it's a video, a sound, 
uh, you know, a picture, an image, uh, an animation, whatever it may be. And that's just kind of like the, the art part of the NFT. But NFT is also a contract, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a smart contract that can say, you know, when you own this digital asset, it will unlock these other things, which could be, you know, access to the actual original artwork. It could be, you know, access to an exclusive community. It could be access, if you're a musician, access to behind the scenes events, you know, so it has the, also the ability to unlock certain things, you know, within that digital asset. And not only that, but it can then be sold or transferred with transparency. You know, when I, when we sell this thing today, <laughs> uh, five years from now, I may have no idea who has it because the person who buys it today may decide to gift it to somebody or sell it to somebody else. I will have totally no control of where it goes. In the NFT space, because it's in the blockchain, it doesn't reside in one single computer, but in thousands, hundreds of thousands of computers around the world, you know, you will be able to see five years from now who owns your NFTs, you know, 10 years from now, who owns them, how much they paid for that NFT, you know, which is, so it, it creates a whole other universe of transparency over, over those digital assets. So that's kind of what it is. That's why I'm very excited about it. Um, but with all, you know, with all things, we all have to act cautiously and, and get ourselves educated with it because just uh, just like in the email space or or the uh, social media there are scams there are scammers right so same same there so, the so best how do you, let's say that you have the, the physical piece of artwork you will <laughs> scan it then yes you would <laughs> scan that piece of the your artwork correct <laughs> and then where do you put it up to be sold as an nft there are multiple platforms and there are multiple ways also of doing it. I mean, that's just one example, right? Uh, you can also create a digital art that doesn't exist anywhere physically, but it's created digitally. Uh, and that will also be, uh, can be uh, an NFT in itself. So once you have that digital asset, whatever it may be, it could be just you singing a song for, you know, for one minute, you know, and then what you have to do is then you have to pick a blockchain uh, that is associated with a specific uh, currency you know, like Ethereum, Tesos, or other ones, and then a, an online platform or a marketplace that uses that particular currency in order to sell your NFT. So that's kind of like there are multiple uh, marketplaces in order to put your artwork as an NFT. So there are options. You have options when it comes to that. And that's where I think artists need to do their due diligence of learning about the different options, you know, before you, you know, you start going out there. Because in the blockchain, Whatever you put out there, it will stay there, uh, you know, for perpetuity, unless you burn it. You can burn it, but it costs money also to do that. So uh, there are expenses that are associated with it as well. Uh, and, and the cool thing is that there are a lot of new platforms coming out. Even if for 2022, there will be a lot of new things coming out and happening, which is exciting too. And, um, you know, you will see, I think we will have more and more opportunities to participate in different ways. Uh, whatever makes sense for each one of us, because it may be different, you know, what makes sense for one artist might not make sense on, for that other one, or maybe you want to do something different. So there will be, you know, there are already options and choices, there will be more, uh, and there are different ways of uh, deploying your creations. You know, it could be a one of a kind, like a one-on-one -on -one that's associated with your image. It could be a collection of, you know, kind of like a artist we do series. You can do a series, which is kind of what I'm going to be releasing pretty soon, a collection of uh, images, uh, animated images on my, on my NFTs. And then there are projects which are a lot more complex, you know, which also have a community associated with the project. And there are a lot of things that, you know, you almost become part of that community too when you participate in, on, on that project. So uh, those are kind you of- You think like that um, a lot of artists are, are going this direction or where do you see this? Well, I think it's going, uh, I, I think a lot of artists are curious for sure. I was curious last year, like, what in the world is this, right? And it's a new space, so everybody sort of knew. Uh, there are, you know, there are a few, of course, artists who have been on this from the, you know, from many years kind of going through and being part of this, everything that's happening. But, uh, you know, the NFT is fairly new, so everybody sort of knew. We are all learning and figuring it out. Figuring it out. And uh, I think there's a lot of, uh, uh, also a lot of headlines of what we see in the news, like, you know, people... Uh, the artist, digital artist, who's all you know through uh, the auction house, you know, you know millions of of, money, of dollars on that. You may see headlines of a teenager or a eleven year old who sold five million dollars of NFTs and all these things, right? So those are all the headlines that we see. But behind the headlines, there are really 
interesting artists, really interesting people who really want the best for for that and making the best use of the platform and finding ways to collaborate with others and, and make it make it the best. So I think it's going to continue to grow. I don't think it's gonna it's not a a fad that's gonna go away tomorrow. I think it's just the beginning. Uh because it has you know, NFT in itself has a lot of potential. It's not just a picture. It's really what you can do with it, you know, as a contract. Uh, that if something happens, then therefore something else will happen. You know, uh, I think it has a lot of potential. And I think uh, we're just scratching the surface. And uh, you know, my advice for everyone is just, just start listening, start hearing about it. And um, I think I'm right there because I'm kind of old school. <laughs> huh? And I like the old way. So it's kind of very complex to me to understand these NFTs. Yeah. But I think it's important to learn about it. And I think it's important to open possibilities because you never know where you know, you you can make money and, and um, this is just another opportunity and, and we should always, like you said, just put ourselves out there and, and listen and learn, right? Yeah. So. And, and another thing about it that is, you know, I didn't mention, but you know, that one of the benefits is like, for example, uh, if we make an NFT of this image and we sell the NFT itself, you know, I can put a cap on it so that every time that NFT is resold, you know, in the secondary market to somebody else, I get 5% of it or 10% of it or whatever you want. So you don't get that anymore in the art world anywhere, right? When this, uh, when your artwork is sold, it's sold. Right? If they, yeah. uh, you happen to become <laughs> famous and then they sell it for 3 million, then you're not gonna get it. So Bonnie it. But, is asking, <laughs> what, are, what is the point of NFTs? Well, I think as I just explained, you know, it is, and, and don't miss Monday's episode, I'm gonna unpack it even with, you know, with more detail, but, you know, the point of it is to um, create this decentralized way of uh, of having, you know, accessibility to these digital assets. You know, decentralized meaning that uh, the best example, as an artist, if I go to Sachi Art and I upload my my painting on Sachi Art to be sold, right, on Sachi Art, that image resides on Sachi Art's server, right? Mm -hmm. Sachi Art goes out of business, you know, so those my my you know my market and everything else that's in it on a decentralized system that image that you're putting out uh it's uh in the blockchain meaning that it's not in one server or one computer so it be, it's it's a it's a massive infrastructure and there are multiple um blockchains i thought it was just one you know when i started like oh the gabriel talks about the blockchain, there were actually many blockchains, there are many currencies, there are many things. So uh, yeah, I mean, the, the point is that it's going to take us into a different level, into a different way of managing our assets, both perhaps physical and maybe digital too. I mean, remember the remember back, I mean, you, you and I, uh, Sandra, we've been here for a while. Uh, we're not gonna give our age, although probably I will because we <laughs> talk about the 50 things, but uh, I'm not gonna ask you yours. But uh, you remember back in the day when the internet was around, when we said, nobody is gonna buy art online because everybody wants to see it first, yep. right? Why nobody's gonna go to a website and buy art online because art collectors want to see it in person. Well, guess what? That's not an argument anymore, right? That has been thrown out the window, especially after the pandemic. And uh, even, you know, my gallery, 90% of my, of my uh, uh, collectors uh, of territory contemporary gallery, they have never uh, visited the gallery. You know, they are buying from other places, not in Chicago, online. And we thought that would never, that was crazy. That would never happen, right? So I think NFTs is just kind of like gonna be like the next transition of things, right? Which right now we may think it's crazy. We don't understand, you know, it's, it's not gonna go anywhere. I right. think it's gonna go somewhere. I agree. But things evolve, things have to change. Things cannot stay the way we like it. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm just gonna take what you just said because um, one of your 50 things that you turned 50 this year, I turned 50. Last year, year. last year in November, yeah. <laughs> so um, we're both 50 and I loved because you came up with a 50 things that you have learned and you put it out. And so if you haven't heard uh, Sergio's 50, how did you call it? Yes, I call it the, uh, it, it was a countdown to the 50 things I've learned about art and mindset, uh, you know, in the last 50 years. It, it took me 50 years to learn these 50 things. <laughs> and um, I actually, you know, I, I every time you would say 48, 40, 
47, 46, 45. I was like, yep, yep. Like check, check, check. You know? yeah. So, I mean, can you just briefly tell us a little bit about that? Cause it was so fun. Like I loved listening to you because it made me realize that you made the work, but I can validate it. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, you know, it's, uh, I got, I got to a 50, right to my 50th birthday. And uh, well, I said, well, I can be sad about it or I can come up with something to make it fun, <laughs> right? <laughs> and uh, so I decided to do on the second one. Uh, so like, I'm gonna sit down and really uh, think about what are the top 50 things I have learned about art, my art career and about, um, you know, mindset. And then do a live on Instagram and share it and then also record it for the podcast and share that. And so that's what I did <laughs> and it was really fun. So a lot of my friends, you know, came online and I shared all my 50 top lessons that I have learned. And uh, these are things that to me have become things that I live by. You know, when, when I looked at this, started as a fun idea, but then as I started thinking about it, like, well, you know, these are really things that you could say that 50 things that I stand for as a human being, as an artist, as a creative, these are it. You know, this is what I believe. And when I look at all the content that I create, my videos, my podcasts, you know, they all have to do with one of these things in some way or another. So tell me your top 10. All right, top 10. Well, that is a hard one. But let me pick, let me pick uh, some good ones here. Uh, okay, here's a good one that I talk about often. The art, this is number 46. The art world is made up of the people you surround yourself with. You know, I believe we all have an opportunity for as much as we love or hate the art world, we can make our own. Find your community, find your people. And that's, you know, that's your, uh, that's, that's your art world that you can create. Sounds like you're part of my art world, right? And yeah. uh, that's, that's why we connect. That's what we love. We, will love. we can chat. You know, we can have a conversation like this with not rehearsing, not knowing what are the questions are. Because, you know, we, we, uh, we have things in common. So I think as artists, we need to do that more and more. Uh, another one, um, art is not about money, but you need the money to make the art that is not about money <laughs> <That's> <laughs> as well. You know, uh, when I started talking about art business, there were not many people. Uh, of course, I wasn't the first one. There were others who have been doing that before me. But th there were still a lot of people who didn't want to talk about art business. You know, I just want to make the art and that's it. Don't tell me about don't, how to sell, how to do this. That's the job of the gallery. Well, what happened is that many galleries have closed. Many galleries have gone out of business. Many galleries, et cetera, right? Or now they want new artists and things like that. So often we find ourselves... Um, kind of left out. So what do I do if I don't have a gallery, if I have never learned the business part of it? So that's why, you know, even though you make art that is not about the money, well, the truth is that we all need the money to buy the supplies and to eat and, you know, to survive in order to make the art that is not about the money. So money is not a dirty word in the art, art world vocabulary for us as artists. It's actually, uh, it's a word that can empower us to do more things mm -hmm. if, if we have it, you know. Uh, another one, uh, let's see. Can we make a parenthesis since you talked yeah. about galleries? Um, I've had a lot of um, questions regarding galleries and how to go about it nowadays with the pandemic, with everything that's happening. You know, there's a lot of openings that they don't take place because they have to take a, you know, they have to take a step back and they're always adjusting to one thing or another. So um, what do you suggest for artists and galleries right now? What is the, the good approach or how, how would you, rephrase that i guess yeah i think the best approach is to be adaptable and i think that's one of my it's one of my 50 things too you know i think the most successful artists are the ones who can adapt you know the moment we fall in love with something and we just want it to work forever that's when we become vulnerable so we need to adapt you know if, as a gallery we had to adapt we had to say okay wait a minute you know the world is changing uh, we need to put all our resources into building our online marketplace right and uh, online marketing that's what we did and, uh, you know, as an artist, same thing, right? Right now, Instagram is hot and it's what we're using. And then TikTok came around. So I said, well, I'm going to try it. I'm going gonna, gonna to explore it, you know, see what it is. Right now, Discord is another new thing that a lot of people in NFT are using. So it's like, oh, it's not another one. So now I had to learn a little bit about Discord. And I hate Discord, but, you know, it might become the next big thing and how people interact and connect with each other. So adaptability, I think, is, you know, adaptability is, is the best, you know, if, um, if you're still stuck with MySpace, <laughs> well, you know, that's, uh, <laughs> that, that's all you're in you, trouble. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so let's say you have a body of work ready to go. Mm -hmm. How do you do it? Where do you go? Where do you market yourself? 
Tell us a little bit about that. So if you have a new body of work that you create as an artist, well, you have to look at, uh, I always look at, you know, who you are, where you are, and what you have. So for example, if you, if you work with a gallery, then, you know, you have to uh, partner with your gallery on the release of your new body of work. And, and you know, a gallery uh, relationship is that, it's a relationship, right? Where if there's no communication, you know, there's, there's not good results. So work with your gallery on that. If you're working on your own as an artist, well, you know, you have to then create your your own marketing and your own ways of look, saying, okay, now I have this body of work. How am I going to release it to the public? How am I going to talk about it? What am I going to say about this work? What's the story behind it? Because it's not just the images. What's the story, right, that we have behind the work that we create that people want to hear and would love to hear? Uh, yeah, they may see the artwork and they may get uh, interested, but when they hear your story, then it becomes more meaningful to them. So figure out those things and and then now whether you have the body of work another option is like okay do i want this body of work to also uh be exhibited or get fine exposure so then approaching curators or galleries where this new body of work might be a good fit and so on so those are kind of like decisions that one has to make uh and uh, and prepare for them you know as you as you release the new body of work and i and i i believe that uh when you create a new body of work the best way is to instead of just posting the artwork here and there randomly that at the end of the day, nobody knew it was a new body of work <laughs> because it's just been posting it here and there. Make some noise, you know, be excited for it and say, hey, that's kind of what I do. And you, I think you guys know who follow me. You know, when I'm releasing a new body of work because I make a lot of noise and, and I prepare and I do, uh, I talk about it and, and then I release it and then it's out in the public. And, and I believe in cycles of push and pull. You know, there are seasons where you're just an artist, you need to really push hard your marketing. You know, really, the, no shame in pushing your marketing. Because then once that's done, say, okay, now I'm going to enjoy being an artist. And now's when you pull back. You say, I'm not trying to sell you something right now. Today I will. I'm trying I, you know, have no shame. I'm going to try to sell you this artwork because it has a good cause, right? But tomorrow, Sunday, I'm not. You know, I'm just going to maybe make a picture, put a post of something fun, something exciting, and I don't have the pressure of I need to be marketing for marketing you know sake so i believe that allows you to give that push and pull uh cycle that i actually can... love that i love the push and pull because we're constantly having to pivot and you know and and really like you said push and pull with how we're doing things and um it's the yin and the yang of our lives right um, exactly. so we have to find that balance somehow right right absolutely yeah yeah and and uh and, and it is it is a matter of uh, you, you're always adjusting, right? Seasons of life. I love to talk about the seasons of life. Um, you know, there are, there's a season in which, uh, you know, like now, if uh, a lot of, you know, maybe some family members are sick or so on, and you need to take care of them and you cannot get in the studio, that's okay. Give yourself permission to do that. You cannot post every day because you are in this season. That is fine. You know, giving ourselves permission to honor and acknowledge the season of life we're in. There might be a season in which you have all the time in the world and everything is going great. And, uh, you know, you'll enjoy that too. And also, I think you have to listen to yourself. And, um, you know, if you're not a, you know, a digital person and want to be social media all the time, don't be. Exactly. You know, there's other ways to connect. There's other ways to exactly. find your people. And make sure that you're first and foremost that your mental health is okay. Mm -hmm. um, because this can also create mm -hmm. a, a different problem. And, and you don't want that. Right? right. You don't want to, you, you need to, like I said, we need to find that balance. And, yeah. Um, yeah it's it's and like so, the awareness part of it. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so one question before we go back to the top 50, how do you market the NFTs you created? Well, the way, well, in the same way in which you would market anything else, you know, you have to tell everyone that, you know, you have to share it with the world, how to create a community about it, uh, around it. And, uh, you know, it's, it's the same, you know, in a, in a very similar way. You know, if you will know when I release my collection, because I will be talking about it. I might be doing some lives. I probably do some videos. I'll do, you know, posts. I'll just see the same kind of language in Facebook and my Instagram and my Twitter and my LinkedIn and my TikTok, right? Uh, that's right. how you know. So uh, yeah. it's, it's kind of like the same way. You know, the marketing principles will, will stay the same. doesn't matter what is it that you are promoting. Um, just have to be aware of those things. In the case of the NFTs, uh, a lot of people who are in the NFTs and the big community of NFTs is really, it gathers in, in uh, Twitter. So, 
you know, here's, the, here's another funny part. You know, I had tw a Twitter account for many years, but I hardly ever checked it. I hardly ever used it. And now that uh, I'm getting into NFT, so I had to dust it off, get <laughs> good at it, see what's new. And now I'm using it again to connect with uh, people who are in that space. So and are you, know, you connecting? Yes, yes. And it's an incredible community in, uh, uh, in the NFT space that is in Twitter. And it's a very helpful community. Let, let's say, you know, you go in and uh, people helping each other out because everybody's new at it, right? We are, so everybody's kind of like learning from everybody. So it's a great community uh, of that. So, yeah. Okay. So now let's go back to the top 50. Yeah. So I don't know how many, I think we shared three, right? I think so we far. We said three. You, yep. You, you keep count of it. <laughs> yes, I'm counting. Don't worry. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, your communication as an artist should match who you are as an individual. If you are funny, make us laugh. If you are serious, make us think. Just be you. It kind of relates to what you just said a minute ago about the self-awareness of, you know, if you're a person who loves words and you hate video and you just cannot do video, give us beautiful words, you know? And just because everybody's doing video here doesn't mean that words are no longer working. <laughs> you know, exactly. that's your gift. That's kind of what your best way in which you communicate and when you write something people read it and they respond to you then keep writing you know by all means you know if you are funny just you know make us laugh you know or, or you know if you are very really thoughtful and so on you know be doing that's something that i have learned at the beginning i was afraid you know because uh you know i came like you you know from mexico so uh, you know english was my second language there are always words that i avoid because i mispronounce <laughs> and i won't say which ones but, uh, you know, probably the same as, as mine. <laughs> yeah, because I probably butchered it. So I won't say. It. But uh, so, you know, for, for a long time, that was kind of like keeping me back. But then I realized, wait a minute, you know, I just got to be who I am. Uh, if you don't like me, you won't follow me. You won't look at myself. But if you do, if, you, if what I say resonates with you, then it's OK. You know, we can we can go past beyond that. And yes, I make mistakes and I don't redo my videos. You know what it is. It is what it is. I, of course, I try to be good but i'm not a perfectionist i believe on get it out there the honesty over overruns perfectionism you know i think people can say well he's he's doing he uh, or uh he or she is, is honest you know and you're doing it who you are the way you are and i think that's kind of what what people want for sure i think that's how you connect at the end of the you know at the end of the day you need to be you and mm -hmm. nobody will be you except yourself. So you right. can't compare to others. You don't have the same stories as other people. You have your own story. So be true to who you are and mm -hmm. stay in that channel. And that somehow will connect with your viewers. A hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely. All right, here's another one. Uh, quickly, uh, rejection should make you sad because you care, but should not make you stop because you care even more, right? We all have rejections. I have experienced mine. Should you have experienced yours? You know, we have rejections and sometimes even from people that we think are going to say yes. And, you know, and, and, and I have learned like, you know, sometimes uh, it's not that they don't like me or they don't want me. Or, there might be a different season in, life in which it doesn't connect with my season. Or just because I have time to do something right now doesn't mean Sandra has time to do something right now. Right. And a lot of times we measure that way. Well, that person doesn't want me, doesn't like me. Uh, because I approach them and they said no. We have to honor their no just as much as we honor their yes. And yeah, it makes us sad. So it's okay to be sad. <coughs> I, I say, do not be sad if you get a no. We should be sad if we really care, right? We're like, oh, geez, you know, you feel disappointed. But because we care even more, you know, we say, well, we're going to keep going. We're going to keep moving forward. We're going to ask somebody else, you know, that's not going to stop me. It's going to make me sad for a day or two or maybe an hour or whatever, whatever it is everybody's different and and again depends on the size of the no some no's are no big deal some no's are big deal right so honor yourself and uh, on that and and uh, it's okay to feel sad but then because you care even more and, and you know what you learn so much from rejection oh yeah mm -hmm. you know you get a thicker skin you want to have those rejections because you're going to come back stronger than ever so right. i think that it's important to fall because the way you're coming back, it's much better. You're going to learn a lot. I totally agree. Right. Totally agree. It's like, that's very, that's very truth. <laughs> that's our school, right? Failure yes, exactly. School. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Some, keep going. So, some people say, well, I don't call them failures. I call them learning opportunities. That, and that is good. I like to call them failures too, because I learn when I recognize something is a failure. I have to realize 100%. what I failed. 
Yeah. A hundred percent. It's important yeah. to own that you failed. It's important to exactly. know that you're not perfect. Exactly. Nobody's perfect. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, every art another one. This one was number 24. Every artist has an interesting story. Share it with the world. And, you know, that's a, another one. We all have a story. Sometimes, you know, in, in some of my workshops, I talk about telling your story. And there's always an artist or two who says, you know what, Sergio, I don't have a, uh, an interesting story. I grew up in an average family. I went to college, university, I became an artist. And that's it. You know, there's like nothing fancy about my story. But because we are living it ourselves, you know, we don't really realize the, you know, the interesting aspects of our story. So we kind of go through a process of look at, look at your life as an artist. What are the, the, uh, the highlights of your career and what are the downfalls, you know, or the, the most difficult seasons that you have? And that's your story. You know, you can talk about that. You know, you can talk about the, uh, you know, the, the things that have made you excited about being an artist and the, the lessons that you have learned over time that are the most difficult ones. And when you combine the two, now you have a beautiful story, <laughs> right? <laughs> and, and that's, that's kind of how it works. Mm -hmm. So share it with the world. Even if you don't think it's interesting, you will find people who will find it interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's another one. Uh, it's not about the size of the studio that matters. It's what comes out of the studio that really matters. You know, we live in the Instagram world that you see everybody with their beautiful studios, beautiful lighting, and you're like, ah, oh, you know, Sullivan, I wish I had it. If I only had that beautiful window, right, that Sandra has behind it, I would make amazing artwork, right? <laughs> so, you know, we, we cannot dream about these things. and sometimes it makes us feel like we are inferior or minor because all I have is a kitchen table. All I have is a corner. All I have, you know, is my right to work and the time that I have in the train. And, you know, the reality is that, that you know, um, in posterity, nobody's going to check out your time card and nobody's going to check out the size of your studio. It's really what you put out in the world what really is going to be, uh, the, you know, the test, the test of time. Uh, so if you are an artist who right now you're watching this and all you have is just a little corner in your kitchen, amazing art can come out from that. You know, I have had studios that are like, you know, just like that, you know, really my garage uh, in like really bad shape. And I have had studios who are really beautiful. So um, we can make art whatever circumstance we're in, you know, don't let that ever make you feel, uh, you know, less of an artist or, uh, you know, less of a creative because you don't have the space that you see other people have on Instagram. So since we are pausing right now, I would love to show the painting that you're donating for Feeding America. Mm -hmm. um, so Sergio has donated. This is his fourth painting. Um, uh, the third one, is, isn't it? The third one? Third? Yeah, it's the one. third one. Oh, yeah. Well, you, yeah. we sold two in the first one and then the third one. So this will be the fourth one, isn't it? Oh, okay, I lost Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> It's so okay, this will be good. the fourth one that we're donating <laughs> for Feeding America. So please, you guys, if you want to help people and get this beautiful piece of artwork from Sergio, we're asking $250 for Feeding America. That uh, means that you will be helping 2,500 meals to be distributed. And um, I can't stress enough um, that people are in need of food and you would be also getting this gorgeous piece of artwork from Sergio. So Sergio, can you talk to us a little bit about this, this piece? Yes, so this is a piece uh, where you have, you know, uh, a figure standing. Um, and in this figure, you will see also uh, some geometry aspects of that, uh, which this series that I had created, this is actually the last one that I had done for this particular series which it was finished and then I added one more and uh, have been saving it. So when you invited me again, like, okay, this is a great time to actually pull it out because I have never shown it to anybody. And uh, so this piece uh, is part of that. In this series, there are, each artwork has three circles and each circle representing body, mind, and soul. So kind of what oh. makes a, an individual, right? Or body. Wow. Or so, so, you know, this, you know, that's one circle, two circles, three circles. Uh, and then the figure is in a pose of uh, kind of like, uh, meditation, you know, this whole series was a whole about that kind of like self-awareness. And uh, there, are, there are like some wings of fire. So it's called uh, uh, Wings of Fire. That's the title of this piece. And so the, the fire itself. I love it. It looks like very meditative, like he's yeah. meditating or, you know, mm -hmm. with the circles that you just explained. It's, it's gorgeous. So yeah. I really hope that someone here 
will buy this beautiful piece and help people in need. And you can just DM me or Sergio and we'll mm -hmm. tell you what to do. Right. Um, Which will be, maybe let's make sure really fast. So if the way you buy this is you don't pay me. So you will actually be making the donation directly to uh, uh, Feeding America. <coughs> Send us the proof of payment. And then that's what will get you this artwork. Exactly. For so can you talk about the materials? Is it on paper? Is it, what kind of materials did you use on this? Yeah, so it is uh, acrylic, <laughs> on, acrylic on paper. So paper in the back. Uh, it's acrylic on paper. And it's an original, it's not a print, it's an original. Uh, this series is retailed at 500, so we're giving it a half the price at 250, so it's a great deal. And now something that is super excited that you may have seen in my video yesterday is that yes. this piece unlocks an augmented reality portion of it. So uh, when you get that piece and you purchase it and you get it in your home, you can download an app that's called Archivive. And what you do is you point your, um, your phone or mobile device to the artwork and what you will see is uh, the artwork become animated so let me see if i can do it without the reflections but wow. you can see that's incredible the, I the wings I actually really caught on fire i'm like how did you do that there's a little flower that's also animated it's I a little bit of a snow that. falling so wait so what app is this so the the app to read it to view it is called Artivive. So but how art, did you get it to look like that? What did so, you do? Yeah, so then you have to create the animation first. So the Artivive is where you upload it and where that gives you the app to read it. But uh, you have to take a picture of the artwork, uh, animate it, and there are different apps, all kinds of apps that you can use to animate your artwork. You can also use Photoshop to uh, like remove and add parts of it, or you can do a video. You can do even a time lapse of you making the artwork. And then yeah. what you do is you go to Archivive and you create an account, you upload the artwork, you upload the animation or the assets that you want to have associated. So when somebody uh, uses the app Archivive and points at the artwork, you know, it comes alive in their phone. So it will do, oh, you know, okay, something. I love that. And the original piece is 11 by 14. Is that correct? It's 11 by 14. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So and um, did you varnish it at the end? It looks very like, What what medium did you use at the end? Uh, no, there's no varnish. What happens is because my lights are very strong, maybe that's why. But it's, it's no, it's just acrylic. Oh wow! Okay, I, look maybe really cool. Looks... Maybe you know, maybe I did. Maybe I did spray it. I think I did spray it. Now I remember because I put a little bit of charcoal. Yes, uh, and yeah, I, I had to seal the charcoal, so I did spray it with a bit of a varnish. Now that I think. Yeah, of... it just looks very smooth. You know. Yeah. Exactly. Beautifully, yeah. like what, yeah, I love that. Mm -hmm. Um. Oh, if you can please spell the name of the app. Okay, Artivive is spelled, uh, let me look. Actually, I'm going to show you the icon so you can see how it looks like. Perfect. Is this, is this one right where my finger will be at? Right there. Okay, perfect. And how do you spell it? Art? So the way you spell it is A R T as in Tom, I V as in Victor, I V as in Victor, and the letter E. So Arte Vive, Arte Vive, uh, in, in Espanol sería Arte Vive, <laughs> and in English Arte Vive. So uh, yeah, it's, it's really cool. Now the app is only to, to look at artwork that already has augmented reality. To create it, and to it's free, you can do that for free. Just go to artevive.com online. When you go to artevive.com, you can then, in the website, you can see how it works. You can create your account totally free. Uh, they have tons of tutorials to get started. You know, make so they so show you how to add, for example, in your case, the the flames. Well, they don't show you, you know, the specifics of how to animate everything. However, they give you some recommendations for apps to use. Uh, they have some tutorials. They also have workshops and things of that nature too. What app did you use to to do yours? So this one, I use a combination of. Uh, Photoshop, where I add and remove things to it, or sometimes I separate layers. Uh, other apps that I use, uh, there's one that's called Motion Leap. Motion and then leap, like making a leap. So yeah. Motion is another one. Another one that I like to use is uh, uh, Plotograph, like plot, P-L-O-T, P as in Paul, L-O-T, and then the letter A, and then graph, Plotograph. That's another good one. 
most of them are paid apps. You know, they're, they're not free. You can try them, some of them for free and, you know, you, you can look at that. But pretty much if you go to your app store, any app that creates animation, try it, test it and see what you can do with it. You know, uh, there are apps that when I upload my artwork, it, I, it doesn't do any, you know, it, they don't give me what I'm looking for. So, you know, I try different ones and test them and see kind of what works. Depends what you're so looking for. So this is for. what we're going to do. You're going to send me a text with all the little apps and I'm going to just add it to our conversation here on the bottom and then everybody can can have it and they can read them and they can try it out. Um, yes, so, absolutely. But, um, but I highly recommend it because uh, it really can make, uh, you know, something quite interesting, particularly for the younger generations that we all as artists were trying to reach out to, right? But everybody has their phone in their hands. So why not also give them a, a further experience? And the cool thing is that, you know, the, the, the uh, Archivive app, once you put an image, it, do, it not only works with the image itself, uh, the artwork original, but it also with a print from your website. If you want to see it in full action, go to my website to Sergio Gomez online, right, .com, of course, right slash uh, A reality, all together, A, letter A, and then reality. And you can download the app from there so you have to do it. And every artwork that is there has augmented reality. So you can do it from your phone looking at my you know, on, on my website so on a computer. Cool. I love that. And you can check it out and test it. So, yeah. That's really cool, Sergio. So, <laughs> um, what, what has changed from 2021, you think, coming into 2022 um, regarding business and marketing? Have you seen as a change of things? Is there a new wave of attacking our, our marketing? Well, I think the, the biggest change, one is NFTs, which, by the way, was the number one most searched word in uh, Google in 2021. So that means not only artists, but everybody wants to know what in the world are those things. So that's one big change. And uh, second thing that I think you have all seen, that when, now when you go to Instagram and you browse, you will see more video probably than pictures, where before you know, static pictures and then a video, five, six, 10 pictures and a video. Now it's the other way around. Five videos, one static picture, two videos, one static picture. So uh, of course the best way you follow, but uh, the more and more, you know, the platform in which we are in right now, you know, is favoring video as the type of content that they are pushing out to more people. Do you know why that happened? Yeah, because they don't want to lose people to TikTok. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. The same. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, you know, still photography is still amazing. So. Yeah, of course. And like I said, you know, just because that doesn't mean that you nobody's going to look at your pictures, but we just said, you know, the changes, right? What, what they're, what they're trying to show more. Now, if you're, if you're a photographer, for example, you can do a video with your photographs, you know, which if you, right. it can give you more, more visibility than just putting the picture all by itself. You know, there are tons of apps you can put that will do like a little slideshow of your images, for example. Right. And um, how do you, I guess, what are a few tips that you can give to artists coming into 2022, what they should be doing um, to help themselves, to put themselves out there and to sell? I think more than more than never before, I think we need to really put time in learning. You know, where we are go, 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 go. Uh, I think in 2022, I highly recommend, which is like what I'm doing too, is I'm doing a little bit of pause and, uh, and learning more. You know, like you said, you know, kind of everything that we've been talking about, what's new, what's changing, what things I don't know about that I want to little, learn more about. And, and even if that takes, you know, a little bit of your marketing time and so on, you know, spending more time learning um, so that then when it comes to the marketing, then we are better equipped. Okay. And, and then why don't you leave us with one more food of food for thought? Okay. How about I'll give you one more of these uh, 50 uh, Perfect. words. Uh, let's see. One of them. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. Um, yeah, this is a good one. Okay. As car uh, this one's number four. So it's like, it was like high at the top. So number four. A scarcity mindset wants to keep things to itself for the fear of somebody stealing their ideas. 
An abundant mindset shares freely and lives without fear of somebody stealing your ideas because you're already putting them out there in the world. So, you know, it's this idea of shifting on mine from what I know is mine and you have to go through what I went through in order to get what I am versus, you know, actually I'm going to give them to you. Here they are, you know, <laughs> and then I feel I live freely because, well, what is it to steal? <laughs> right. And that's what why I think it. it's important to have a mentor because a mm -hmm. mentor is someone who is willing to share everything. Exactly. And, and so I think it's important for in any type of um, business that you're in, if you're an artist, if you're not, find someone who has, you know, walk the walk and mm -hmm. that wants to help because mm -hmm. those are the people who have so much to give right. and, and they want to help you. So right. um, a mentor would be someone that I would highly recommend saying what you right. just said. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And, and people like you, right? Uh, you are, every week you invite a person who brings in great knowledge and uh, you know, you're giving it away. You know, it's like, here, here it is, you know. You can take exactly. it, you can consume it, you can have it. And um, you know, because of these conversations, you learn, your audience learns, we all learn, you know, because I watch them too sometimes. Uh, when I'm around there and you know it's really great and uh, also the person who you are interviewing also learns more because we all learn when we, you know when we have conversations so oh for sure good. for sure I've had so many artists say wow I didn't even know that about myself <laughs> and so yes you absolutely learn so much and you know to put ourselves out there and and uh, every week and or you do it mostly every day um, <laughs> you know it's 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 just we're learning and we're listening and that's I think the most important thing. So I'm gonna just open really quickly here for um, for questions. If you guys have any questions, please feel yeah. free to ask um, anything the, right now. Yeah, I didn't um, see the comments on my end for some reason. Oh, um, so we're not gonna spell the name of the apps anymore. I'm just gonna write them all down on the comments. So you mm -hmm. can have them um, there um, for you to, like I said, to, for you to explore. Um, but if anyone has any other questions, this is the time. If not, Sergio, um, thank you so, so much, my friend. And, um, oh, Agath, um, she's also one of my army of <laughs> artists. Um, <laughs> thank you so much. Um, Sergio, can you show us the painting again? And yes. Yeah, so we definitely want you know, somebody to grab this because it is at a really great value. It's the only one left on this series. I will never add more to this particular series. And, uh, you know, it's the only one that unlocks also the augmented reality aspect of it. So it's really a one of a kind. Uh, and I think it uh, would be a piece that you have it in your wall, in your studio, in your home. You bring a friend, I guess, that you want to impress it. Hey, take your phone. Now put this up. Now look at it. Right. Exactly. And, and exactly. see what happens. See so what happens. we're asking two hundred and fifty dollars for Feeding America. Like we right. said, please DM me or Sergio, and and we'll get you going with this. Um, one last question, I guess. What's the best way to advertise? Well, there's not a best way that that works, and nothing else works. <laughs> you know, uh, because when you say there is only one way or the best way, it all depends who you are, what you have and where your audience is and what access you have, right? So, uh, for example, the, the, I think the best way, well, if I were to kind of use the word best, the best way to advertise is to show up with who you are and to tell your story as an artist, to share with the world what is it that you have, uh, why you make it, why you love it, uh, and, in, and engage with other people. I think that the best way is not when you make a post and that says, you know, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, Wings on fire, 11 by 14, DM me, buy it. Very different as if I go and say, well, you know, if I tell you a little bit of story about this artwork, of our, you know, or the things that are my ideas about, you know, the cycles of life. And even if it's the most abstract piece, but if you don't have a specific story about the artwork, you can talk about what were you thinking on when you were working on this particular work. What was happening in your life or in your mind? What does it remind you of? You know, who inspired you from the history of artists that have come before us? You know, in other words, give always people somebody to to grasp and to grab. And that's always your your best marketing when 
uh, you can contextualize what you're selling, whether it's an artwork or a course or a Rolex or whatever it is, you can textualize it in the world so that we can say, oh, that is interesting. I want to be part of that. And, um, and yeah, Love you know, that. That, that's great. I, I think that's what it is. <laughs> And yeah. even in the NFT space, do you, you know, do you one quick question? Do you yeah. suggest, um, you know, when we get emails from magazines that we should, you know, spend money in in ads in magazines, or do you see that as something that will actually help you in uh, the depends, future? Depends what it is. I think whenever you get a an invitation or request, do your homework. There are really. Um, good opportunities and there are bad opportunities. There are opportunities that you just want to take us, take our money. I think right now you can do this test uh, or you can go to Instagram and you can make a post. And if you use the hashtag NFT, NFT art, NFT, whatever, you put it out there. In probably a couple hours, you will have like 10 uh, comments on your post from bots that say, uh, DM it, I mean, a DM us for feature. Right. Uh, we want to feature it. We love it. Da, 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 da. And and they're using the NFT hashtags to really populate. I did that with one post. I had like about sixteen, you know, bots. So it's like really oh. bad, right? So all those are scams. You know, they're sending it to everybody. It, it works by hashtag. It's a machine. Uh, it's not that they actually look at your artwork and say, "Oh, we love it. We really want it." Right? Now, once in a while, you might get a real gallery or a real magazine or a real something that looks at your artwork and say. Oh, I love that. We would love to feature you. We would love to invite you. So that's why for every opportunity, you have to look where it comes from and discern if it's a good or a bad one and be careful yeah. with that. Because if, yeah. you, if you say oh, they're all bad, you might actually miss a good one. <laughs> you know? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> well, Sergio, my friend, thank you so, so much. This has always been a pleasure talking to you. We can Likewise. talk for hours and hours and hours. It's, it's awesome. So That's I'm sure good. you'll be back at some point. So it's it's just a goodbye for now, but we'll see you later, I guess. Yes, and we had to bring you back to breakfast. We said here too, so that uh, you know we can do another. Yes, because it's been, uh, it's been quite the year and a half. Yes, I think now. I think we should talk about uh, all the episodes that you have done. We talk about your artwork and all the good things that you are doing in the world, uh, which will be really amazing too. So yeah, I'll, uh, after this, I'll send you a message, and then we can we can figure Perfect. out. Perfect. Perfect. I love it. Thank you guys for joining. And again, please, um, just if you feel like purchasing a piece of amazing artwork um, and you are helping so many people in, in need, um, $250, please DM me and Sergio and uh, let's keep helping people. And um, thank you, say, you all. You yeah. said $250, $250 will feed how many people? 2,500 meals. Meals. That's incredible. Isn't that that's unbelievable? That's incredible. It really is. It's, it's really unbelievable. So um, like I said, we needed my army of artists and also my army of collectors to help this machine keep going. So um, Sergio, you are so generous with your time and your knowledge. You. And I can't thank you enough for being here. Seriously. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for watching. And, Thanks, uh, everybody. Take yeah, care. We'll see Bye. you next Saturday. Take care. Bye-bye. Please, please make sure to share it.